Hi everyone, I'm Ellie Smith and welcome to the show, Asking the Not So Obvious. Hello, and today with me I have Hannah, and she is curious, as I am sure about many of you, about what exactly are designer babies. How are you today, Hannah? Hey Ellie, I'm doing great, thank you. So now I understand you have some questions about this process. Yes, um, but to get us started, what exactly are designer babies? Well, let us begin. All creatures on Earth are made up of genes, and according to designer genes, the science and ethics, they are our blueprints, which means that our genetic code is what makes a person who they are. Now this is where we can look into genome editing, which is the basic idea to designer babies. As the name suggests, and authors Bedgley's and Michaels confirm, it is when the DNA of a creature is changed or even made by a process of genetic engineering. So essentially, a designer baby is one whose DNA has been changed. Once again, Bedgley and Michael state that by inserting a new genetic code in a virus and putting it in a body, it has the capability to go into the cells and change the DNA. They believe that this technology could eventually be used to obtain certain desirable characteristics, thus creating a designer baby. To create one, author McKibben tells us that a fertilized embryo would be pulled apart and a cell would be chosen. Once done, the DNA would be studied, deleted, and changed. The new DNA will be placed inside a woman and then hopefully becomes a child. There are many things that could be done with this technology. In fact, we already have gene therapy to help some diseases. This is where new genes are replaced in the DNA of a person to help heal a disease already present. Badgley and Michaels report that in the early 2000s, American scientists took monkey eggs and added a gene commonly found in jellyfish. This gene gives them their fluorescent green glow. Of all the eggs that were fertilized, only three survived, Andy being one of them. He is the monkey you see on the right. The name Andy is short for inserted DNA, but backwards. As of now, we do not know if his kids will contain the gene, but if so, he will be the start of a new genetically altered race. I hope I was able to answer your first question. Yes, that was really fascinating, but I would like to know your opinion on the topic. Perfect, so let me tell you some arguments for and arguments against genome editing and designer babies. According to Bedgley and Michaels, embryos are now able to be screened for genetic disorders. This means that you can find out early if your child has some life-altering illness. In fact, Kelsey states that through the use of genetic engineering, the gene for that illness can be removed from not only the child, but also from future generations. This can mean that people who are unable to have children due to their genetic backgrounds can finally have their wish. For example, there is a family in the United Kingdom who was prone to having children with the BRCA1 gene. This makes a person highly susceptible to breast cancer. Through the use of a genetic screening process, they had a child born without this gene, thus wiping it away from their bloodline, says authors Bedgley and Michaels. Although there are some positive reasons for considering designer babies, there are also a lot of arguments against this process. Many people have reservations about this process because they feel as if choosing specific traits for a child would be playing God, says author Kelsey. By viewing this chart, you can see that over half of the religious communities shown are against this idea. Also, that half of all United States adults are against it. Religion plays a large role with this idea. Kelsey states that many religions, such as Judaism, Catholicism, and Islam, are against this due to the way the child is made. This process is similar to in vitro fertilization, which means that many embryos are discarded. Catholics and some Christian sects believe that life starts at fertilization, so they view the discarded embryos as murder. Now, think of this scenario. This year, the newest model of a phone is released. People are excited to buy the latest technology and thousands upon thousands of new phones are sold. But, in the next five years, that technology is now obsolete, and soon people will be buying the new and more technologically advanced phone. McKibben believes that this will happen to the children. It will take away the parenting aspect and make it more about product development. So, if parents want to increase their child's IQ points, then they could do it then other families will feel that pressure to increase their child's IQ because if not, their child will be left in the dust. So soon, that will be the expectation for that generation. However, what if in five years there's technology to double the already high IQ points? Then the previous generation will be left behind by the newer one due to better hardware. Also, how will the other siblings feel about the new and improved child? They cannot compare when it comes to the genetic code. So... Will there be favoritism amongst the parents? Essentially, they are putting a price tag on love. As part of any culture, there are social differences that come from the amount of wealth, race, and politics. The genome process is extremely expensive and only the wealthy will be able to afford it. So, those children will be genetically superior to the other kids. According to Steinbach, it will further increase the gap between the rich and the poor. In addition, you will have a segregation of designer kids and natural kids. 
It will be difficult for the natural children to get ahead in a world full of designer kids because it will be impossible for them to compete. Finally, another major drawback is that people feel as if others will be chasing perfection. Now, there are children who are born with mental disabilities. For example, there is autism and Down syndrome. As a society, we value everyone's life, no matter the mental ability of a person. Especially with faith, author Kelsey believes that it dignifies human life. By having this technology, it could lead to devaluing human life on the whole due to people striving for perfection. Everyone has an idea of a perfect person, whether it is through body image or mental capacity. As a result, the babies who are considered different will be treated as such. Wow, I had no idea of those implications for this. I can see how the pros can be extremely beneficial though. While the cons are extremely controversial, I agree to that. But to know better about this technology, what are some of the implications? It's a very good idea. So let me tell you about the clinical, ethical, and professional issues with gene editing. The ethical issues that come with this derive from the bioethical ideals. The first controversy comes from what is done with the unused embryos. As stated earlier, multiple embryos are used in this process, but only a few have the chance to make it to birth. The process can be viewed as murder to some religious communities because, as previously stated, they believe that life begins at conception. In addition to how the designer babies are created, it is possible that humanity will lose certain traits, states Regali. If society preferred a certain body type, hair color, skin tone, or even temperament, then it would be possible to create that in a child. So, we would lose what makes a person unique. In addition to the loss of individuality, it is important to think of what it took to have the human race as it is today. After thousands of years of evolution, we have created a diverse species. In fact, Bedgley and Michaels believe that the creation of designer babies will create a homogeneous species. The, the human race will delete what evolution has created, thus taking away what is essential for our existence in the long run. Not only does this pose a threat on humanity, but it also takes away the child's right to autonomy. There can be a peace of mind when it comes to knowing that you are who you are and nothing can change that. But Steinbach poses the question, how does it feel if our genes were chosen specifically and not by chance? There will now be pressure on a child to do well where the genes are concerned. The child no longer has a choice to choose its own path because it was already picked. After all, as McKibben so accurately states, you cannot rebel against your genetic code. Although a lot of good can come when changing the genetic code to prevent disease, a few questions arise as a result. The technology is too new to understand what could happen if we tamper with our genetic codes. The author Steinbach informs us that in mice there were negative side effects. Although the insertion of a gene that made them more efficient at completing a maze, it decreased their pain tolerance dramatically. We do not know if this will happen in humans yet, but it does raise concerns for this technology. This goes along with an idea explained by Kelsey. We could alter genetic code to exterminate the disease, but what if in the process beneficial genes that went with that disease were destroyed? We do not know what genes work together in order to form a fully functional person. So by destroying the negative, there's a possibility that a positive is gone. Not only do we have to think about negative consequences that come from alternating the gene code, we also have to think about human error. There are going to be mistakes when people are changing the genetic code, and these mistakes will haunt the child for the rest of its life. McKibben wonders how the parents will feel knowing that a healthy child they chose to change will be challenged and now struggle. So, will we now rate biological changes on Yelp along with the restaurant reviews? Yeah. As you can see, there are many issues that arise with this technology ethically, clinically, and professionally. And now all we can do in the future is hope for society can make the correct decision while also looking at the, issue, the bioethical issues of non-maleficence, benefits, autonomy, and justice. Wow, you give me quite a lot to think about. Now, it's still a little bit unclear to me. Do you have any idea where this technology is going or where this technology could lead? All I can do is offer my recommendations for the future. I believe that it will be important for this technology to be limited. It would prove harmful to try and make your child better and force your wants onto a child that has not yet been born. Sometimes the best thing to do as a parent is nothing at all. This will let your child possess its own free will and make its own decisions. However, I do believe that helping children who would be mentally challenged would be okay. In conclusion, it is not okay to make your child a product and choose the traits you want it to possess. Every person is created to be unique and it is important to allow every individual person to shine in their own way. Some questions to think about. Do you agree with this technology? What do you think life would be like if it becomes available? Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Asking the Not-So-Obvious. Until next time.